their voices are be slowly becoming surf dudes. Four days later. It's been like ten days, right? Yeah? Yeah. Eight days, maybe. In the following, in the days following our first attempt at making traps, my pupils and I were quick to reap the rewards of our efforts. On the first night, we managed to capture six rabbits and one fo Holy crap. Okay, when you think about it... Okay. Here's my logic behind this. When you are hunting in the forest, it takes several, several days for animals to come out because they smell humans. When you sm when they smell humans, they stay away because they know they're going to die from it. It takes usually two or three days for that scent to go away unless you're doing very well about it. Next, they pretty much were fighting in the forest and they tore grass around there. Torn grass usually tells animals that it's a bad sign and something big was going through. Th okay, sorry. I just had to say that. I had to get that out of the way. Anyways, all of which we skinned and consumed that very night. Either way, that's a pretty good catch. Although we didn't get to eat, mu eat much, considering how many villagers the meat was shared between, the, family t the familiar taste was almost enough to bring me to tears. In light of our success, that day we set up the same traps once again and crafted several more. With the taste of meat still fresh in our minds, Azai, Araki, and I all did our part, setting up literally dozens of traps, limited only by the amount of string at our disposal. Nonetheless, our efforts were rewarded once again. We captured more rabbits than last time, enough to divide up evenly between every member of our small village. This pattern repeated once more, and if all goes well, it will repeat yet again today. Okay, one bowl of nutritious go goodies, as requested. While I dreamed of another day's harvest, Chio placed my breakfast on the table. On either side, I found a bowl of fruit and berries, the same as ever. Why is that rabbit food? Why is that rabbit food on the table? We should still have more meat left over from last night, shouldn't we? Ko, you know we can't eat meat every. Hold on. You know you can't eat meat every meal of the day, and you can't skip meals either. If you want to, if you don't want your breakfast, I'm not cooking what you catch today. Hey, now, you're an all-star. Let's not go crazy here. I'm eating, all right. Just watch me. Without hesitation, I crammed a mou my mouth full of miscellaneous fruits and berries. Chio didn't seem terribly impressed, but she didn't lash out either, so I presumed that I was in the clear. Fine, as long as you eat what I prepare for you. Oh, but speaking of meat, have you thought about doing some fishing? I followed the river a bit further upstream yesterday, and it looks like it leads to an underground spring. There were koi swimming around, swimming around. Can you believe that? I always thought it was strange for trees to flourish in the middle of nowhere like this, but if that spring leads to the ocean, then maybe... Um, Kojiwa-sama! Kojiwa-sama! Are you there? Hey, here goes death. Mid-sentence, Chio's attention turned to the door, where she found her new friend shouting as loud as she could. g kana chan I'm here. What's wrong? Kojiwa-sama, you're a samurai, right? Please bring your sword and follow me. Without asking any questions, I grabbed my katana essentially unused since I came to Hatsu, and followed Kana. She led me to a short distance into the forest, near where her brothers and I first began laying traps. Kana looked around anxiously, on guard, as she turned her head back and forth, searching for the danger she hadn't yet warned me about. Even without Kana saying anything, I can guess why I'm here. The large trap Araki made has gone, and there's a lot of blood where it once sat. Far more blood than I expected from a fo rabbit or fox. Going by the bloody footprints, my guess is that somebody stepped in the traps. The only question is, was it one of the boys, or...? Ah, there he is! Oh. A short walk away from where the trap had been set, a wounded samurai sat on the ground, nursing his legs. So, so he, he... Okay. I could clearly see a large puncture wound where the blood had pierced him, and going by the dried blood surrounding the wound, I surmised that he had walked into the trap during the night. Well, well, what have we here? I removed my katana from its sheath and placed the blade against the fallen samurai's throat. Wow, I am hostile. Surprisingly, he didn't put up any resistance or draw his own weapon. Instead, the seated man stared at me in shock, as though he had seen a ghost. C Captain Nabatame, sir, is that really you? That's probably not the right voice. Although I didn't recognize the man before me, he seemed to know exactly who I was. Unfortunately, the dominant expression on his face was surprise. Not fear or joy, so I wouldn't, couldn't be certain if he was once an ally or an enemy. I may not be the captain of the Kudakushi any Kodakushi anymore, but I am indeed Kuichiro Namatame. State your name and your business. Oh, y yes, sir. My apologies. My name is Raizai Sayadori, Sadayori, and I am here on official business from the Mirai Kingdom. 
Now, Batame-sama, we received a report from a foreign trader that there was an undocumented village here next to a forest full of life. I was sent to verify the claims and... Slow down. Who do you mean by we exactly? Who sent you? Well, it was indirect, but I suppose you could say it was the Kodakeshi, sir. Kodakeshi? They must have pawned off the job when they realized it was a village they already burned down last year. No point scouting a village they already decimated, after all. Sir, I don't mean to speak out of turn, but my leg. All right, I understand. I sheathed my sword and approached Raizai. I will help you, but you have to do something for me, too. Yes, yeah, yes, of course, sir. It would be an honor. I'm glad you feel that way. First, you're going to hand me your katana and your wakazashi. I can't have you wandering around here while you're carrying weapons. Second, you're going to report to the Kodakeshi that you found a burned-down, uninhabited village next to the forest, and that the forest itself contains nothing of value. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I understand. You see, that's where you make your mistake, because uh, if you take his weapons away, they're going to be like, what happened to your weapon? And then they're going to question it, and then they're going to send an army and slaughter us all. Kana and, I, Kana and I walked away from the samurai, taking his weapons with us. Once we were out of earshot, Kana looked back at Reizai, then faced me with a complicated expression on her face. What is it, Kana? Uh, uh, no. It's nothing important. I just... Kana tightly hugged the two sheathed blades. Are we really gonna help him? Why wouldn't we? You heard him. That man is a scout. He isn't here to harm us. Uh, I know that, but... Ah, there you are. While Kana fumbled to find the right words, Chio finally caught up to us. Jeez, Kana-chan, you really surprised me there. I know, I knew Ku was fast, but I never expected that kind of agility from you. Uh, eh, oh, um, I guess it's because I'm always chasing after my little brothers. <laughs> Kana forced herself to lash for Ch laugh for Chio's benefit, but her worry overshadowed any false joy. Kana-chan, what's going on? Why did you need Ku, and... Chiyo's gaze drifted down to the sh two sheathed blades cradled in Kana's arms. I'll explain later. Kana, get a bucket and fill it with water. Chiyo, grab enough cloth to bind a person's leg many times over. Make it quick, and they'll be back here when you're done. Two years later. Oh, sorry. With that argument, Kana and Chiyo did what I asked of them. They then handed over the supplies I needed, and hugged back as I approached Raizai once more. I used the water to clean his leg, washing out splinters from a puncture wound as I removed any obstructions I found. I then found, bound his leg with cloth Chio gave me in order to stop the bleeding, and finally sent Raizai off after reminding him of our deal. Is it really alright to just let him go like that? Kanchan told me about your, your deal, but even so, how do you even know he will honor it? With Raizai no longer in sight, Kana picked up the bucket and remaining cloth, then headed back to the village. Chio, however, was not convinced by what she had heard and seen, and showed no sign of returning just yet. The simple answer is, I don't. Raizai might tell the Kutakushi the truth the second he returns, sparking a manhunt ag akin to my escape from last year. If you knew that, then how could you let him go? You're supposed to be this village's leader. How can you knowingly endanger everyone like that? Chio shouted at me angrily, obviously not approving of my actions. And I couldn't blame her. To Chio, a young girl cut off from greater society, my actions may indeed have seemed like those of a traitor. Even so, my actions were not without reason. Chio, what do you think would happen if I killed Raizai? Well, what do I think? Yes, if I had made that scout, or if I had killed that scout, what difference do you think it would have made? Isn't it obvious that Samurai wouldn't be able to report that he found you, or our village, we'd be safe? I shook my head at Chio's naive conclusion, because if I killed them, they would still be looking for me. But I still don't understand why I took his weapons, because they're oh, whatever. Chio, when a scout goes missing, they aren't simply forgotten. If you sent Kana into the forest, and she never came back, where is the first place you would go to look for her? In the forest? Exactly. My dog is scratching at the door, BRB. And we're back. Exactly. That isn't to say that you were wrong, Chio. Raizai may indeed tell the Kutakushi where I am. But this way, there's still a chance that it'll honor our deal, and that's far better than guaranteed the destruction at the hands of his comrades. I see. So even if the odds aren't in our favor, at least this way there's still a glimmer of hope. Correct. But there's more to it than that. I know it may not seem like much, considering what's on the line, but even so. Life is precious, Chio, and preserving life is something you should never feel bad about. One week later... 
I have no idea how short this game will be. Oh, hey. In the week that followed Raizai's appearance, Hatsu Village underwent many changes. First and foremost, all repairs were put on hold, as there were any plans to create new rabbit traps. All new traps were closer in size to Ar Araki's trap, the one that nailed Raizai, and we branched out into, into other traps not suitable for hunting small animals. We experimented with pitfalls, using string as tripwire near beds of rock, and even trimmed back some of the bushes near and trees to make several areas of the forest look almost identical. After that, I began co Oh wait, actually, that's actually very smart. I knew about the pitfall stuff, but trimming back some of the bushes is actually a pretty good idea. After that, I began coordinating evacuation exercises, in which Kana would lead the other villagers to an underground spring that Shio found. The children would help the elderly escape quickly, and we soon marked out an appropriate route to the spring. While the villagers were fleeing, Chio and I would climb up our lumber stockpile onto the roof of the house near the edge of the town. From there, we can see anyone approaching from many miles away, allowing us to take the best course of action so as not to be seen. Although we kept watch every day, I had already informed Chio and the others how long it would take before we needed to keep our eyes peeled. By horse, we were only a day or two away from Mirai. By foot, a direct route would easily take one week at the bare minimum. So, given that Raizai had left on foot, and the Kutakushi would have by horse, we still had an another few days before the worst-case scenario could play out. Even if Raizai Im immediately informed the Kutakushi, and they mobilized that very instant, we could still afford to skip watchman duty for the time being. Still, nothing. I know I should feel relieved by the lack of action, but no matter how much time we spend up here, I can't help but feel anxious. Shio held herself with her good arm, making no attempt to hide her feelings. That is nothing to be ashamed of. Anxiety keeps you alert, and for someone who is potentially being hunted, it can mean the difference between life and death. Yeah, I guess you're right. Was it like this for you, when you were working for them? I know you don't like to talk about it, but right now we're... I know. At this moment, I don't have the freedom to keep secret any information pertaining to the Kutakushi. Truthfully, I can't say I ever felt that kind of anxiety. Rather, I was excited by the thought that a strong opponent might seek me out. The only part of my job that made me feel like you do now was preparing for situations just like this. As much as I tried to mask my own feelings, Hatsu Village's current situation was one I, already familiar, I was already familiar with. Belonging to the Kutakushi, I was among those who sought to destroy villages like this, storming in and killing without hesitation. So although my situation had been reversed, I knew all too well how the assault would take place and the experience was not needed to predict the outcome. Wrecking villages, slaying innocent pe people, torching corpses. Whenever we came across a village like this, I feared the worst, preparing, pr praying that my assignment wouldn't end in such a matter. But no matter how much I wished for a peaceful resolution, my fears always proved to be justified. Even if we didn't slaughter the entire village, our presence still ruined the lives of those we found. We took in slaves, stole horses, depleted the villagers' food supplies. As soon as we stepped outside of Mirai, we became villains. Chia watched me in silently as I told her about my past. Although we had been together for well over a year, I had never told Chia about the things I had done, or explained how I was bad as, as bad as the people hunting me. Unfortunately, as the Kutakushi threatened to make a second appearance in the Hatsu village, I had little choice. Even if Chio hates me for the things I've done, our survival is my type pro top priority. Forgetting my past is a luxury I cannot afford anymore. What's important is that I convey my knowledge of how they operate. As a former captain of the Kutakoshi, I know their tactics well. If anyone has a chance of fending them off, it's me. We would usually strike at our whim, but if we had a reason to believe that the village contained combatants, our strategy differed. First, we would send out a scout, unarmed, to the village. They would pretend to be a traveler or merchant, and gather information for us. Next, we'd use that information to enter the village discreetly, avoiding any watched areas of the village, usually at daybreak. Finally, we'd start by setting a light to the houses of the strongest members of the village, then proceed to slaughter anyone indis indiscriminately. Even as they finally finished, Chio did not say a word. She looked at me with a worried expression on her face, as though torn between anxiety and fear. Chio did not approach me either nor did she show any signs of breaking, speaking her thoughts. <sighs> I wish I had known this would happen. Or I should have known. It's one thing to call yourself a samurai, but it's another to listen to a tale of a government-sanctioned evil. I can only imagine what Chiyo must think of me now, as the man responsible for her parents' deaths, for destroying her life, 
My only redeeming feature was that I was the lesser of two evils. Now that Shio knows the truth. I... I see. So that's why you don't talk like to talk about your old job. Chio finally opened her mouth, barely managing to squeeze out those two sentences. But even as she spoke, her expression did not change. Whatever chord I had struck with Chio, she did not know how to react. And for my part, I wasn't sure where to go from there. Yes, that's my old life. Please, whatever you think of me right now, keep it to yourself until this time of desperation has passed. If we are to be attacked... Yeah. Th sorry, that was not my voice. Yeah, I understand. I'll tell the others about the Kudakushi's tactics, but the rest, I'll leave out. Without another word, Chio climbed down from the roof, jumping onto the same pile of lumber we used to climb up. She hung her head as she walked, not once looking back at me or showing the slightest glimpse of her usual self. Usual self. You see, the thing is, so this village is kind of green, the forest behind them is really green, but everything past that is just desolate wasteland and it makes no sense to me. As I feared, the truth completely shattered the image she had of me which I worked long and hard to cultivate. A full year of bonding gone. Just like that. Once the Kudakishi have come and gone, assuming they do come, this life Chio and I have been leading all together may finally be over. Chio will oust me, and I'll be forced to move on, leaving the village in the hands of those left behind. That might not be so bad, as I and Araki can take over most of my duties, and there are no dangers of this village which call for samurai strength. I'll be sad to go, of course, but from the beginning, I only stayed here in order to look after Chiyo. Now that she has Kana and the others, Chiyo may be better off without me. Three days later. And with that, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to leave that here because I am dying with my voice. I would love to keep on going, but currently, I am just dead on the inside. Not because I don't like this game. This game's actually pretty interesting story-wise, and I haven't been bored yet. It's just my voice can only do too, so much at a time as far as doing uh, the female voices and stuff. I can do all the male voices fine, but female voices are an entirely different story. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. If you guys are curious how I'm, I'm laying this out, obviously you've already seen it. I am starting a video with, you know, my intro, going through as many as I can, as many videos as I can, and then ending it when I can't continue onwards. That way... I don't feel pressured for time, and I can at least enjoy the game somewhat and progress at a certain pace instead of just stop, go, stop, go, if that makes sense. Anyways, comment down below what you think of this game, if you think it's cool, and go give the developers a shout out and give this game a review. It literally just came out today, and I think it's worth your time to go check out. So yeah, au revoir, ladies and gentlemen, au revoir.